When it comes to wireless noise cancelling headphones, I am a self-confessed critic and there are a lot of boxes that need to be ticked. So let's see how the new Bowers & Wilkins PX7 S2 get on. So the PX7 S2 is released in June 2022 with an RRP of 379 are the replacement of the original PX7s released back in 2019. The PX7 S2s promise an updated, slimmed down design, new drive units in the ear cups, upgraded microphones, enhanced ANC, which is active noise cancellation, and new materials that should offer upgraded comfort. So all sounds pretty promising then, but we all know marketing teams can do a great job of promoting new releases and they need to live up to the hype. Plus there is one curveball that Bowers have thrown out there, which I'll come back to at the end of this review. A reminder to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And if you want more info on the PX7 S2s or to support us, you can head to www.smarthomesounds.co.uk. Now I own a pair of the original PX7s and at the time of their release, I loved the sound of them. And while I still rate the sound quality and would say they're up there with the better sounding headphones that I own, the design and comfort while good, I always felt could be a little bit better. So let's go back to last week when I first took a look at the new PX7 S2s. Um, so first things first, Gotta love the packaging. There's definitely a premium feel to Bowers & Wilkins that you can't deny. This box feels really hard wearing, so that'd be great for protecting your headphones if you just chuck them in a bag. So let's open them up. Sam, look at the lining in this case. Just feel that. Nice. Very nice. Feels really nice. And that's where the cables are, so they're sort of neatly tucked away. And it's magnetic too as well, so you're not ever gonna lose it. Now we've obviously got the blue and gold finish here, which is new for S2, as well as a light gray option. And you can still get the classic BMW black if you're a fan of that as well. Again, these just scream premium. They looked good in the promo pictures that were released, but holding them now, I can say that the overall build quality feels great. And the buttons materials also feel really high end. Now, speaking of buttons, we've got a power and pairing switch. Uh, we've got a multifunction button for playback. So I think it's just one press for playback, twice to skip track, three times to go back, and then call management as well. So you can press to answer or end a call. You've also got volume buttons here, and the multifunction button in the middle is textured, so you can sort of tell what's what. And we then got a quick action button on the left ear cup here, which will cycle through ANC and pass through and off modes. Now, if you really wanted, you can change that button in the app to summon your voice assistant, but I don't see that swap being all that popular, to be honest. Now, I do wish they had added touch control, but they've decided to stick with buttons on this design. I know that's down to personal preference, but for me, touch would have been my uh, preferred choice. Now, you've got a USB-C port here, which I mentioned as this can be used for both charging and for passing high-res audio through the wired connection, which you don't actually get on all headphones. And I see this as being a handy option for some of you guys. I think I definitely much prefer this model to the older models. And actually, I think my pair are just over there, actually. Sam, could you just grab them? Cheers. So yeah, I think these are a really nice upgrade in terms of design. They have done away with the carbon fiber arms, and now these are sort of plastic composite, but they're really solid. They definitely don't feel plasticky at all. Now you've also got the accents here um, with the aluminum in gold on this model, and obviously the classic big statement logo here in true BMW style. Personally, I don't mind it. Um, I'm sure some of you would prefer it to be more subtle, but for me, not really a problem. I think this upgraded design feels more modern and they've slimmed down the profile, dropping three centimeters off the dimension of these. But the ear cups are now improved to memory foam and they can now swivel in either direction, which means they sit better around your neck. Now still no luck with foldable ear cups, which means the case is slightly larger and it takes up more space when in your backpack, etc. Okay, so they do offer a better seal than the previous model and they don't feel like they're putting as much pressure on my head and my ears. Now they have reworked the design to have better distribution of the clamping force, so that will improve the seal for audio performance, but also take a bit of pressure off your head. Now I can imagine comfort wise, I'd be happy wearing these for longer. And actually the redesign of the drivers within the ear cups, which I'll chat about in the sound section, has another benefit that there's more depth in these ear cups. So this means you're less likely to get sweaty ears and it will help keep your ears cooler for longer. Right, I think I need to get testing these then. So press play on my music. 
see you in a few days. Okay, so I've now tested these out over the last few days. I took them home over the weekend and really got to know these headphones. And what I will say is that I've definitely enjoyed testing these out. They feel familiar, but they've got some nice upgrades to make me really enjoy using them. Firstly, these connect up in the Bowers & Wilkins Music app, which is the same app you'd use for the latest version of the Zeppelin or Panorama 3, and this is a first for B&W headphones. Normally, you have to use a separate B&W headphone app, but they've decided to bring the S2s into this Music app now. Visually, I like the app. It looks nice and it's just laid out well. The app can be used to tweak the EQ. Um, you can adjust noise cancellation modes and wear sensor, and obviously shows which device you're connected to as well. And Bowers & Wilkins have also said you will be able to stream directly from the Music app, like you do with the Zeppelin, for example, which will be interesting to see how this performs. One nice feature is that the sound setting that you choose in the app will be remembered by the headphones. So even if you connect via a different device, you still get that EQ preferences that you've set. Now you don't get super extensive EQs. It's a very simple bass and treble slider option, which would be a bit of a shame for some of you, but you will find in my sound quality section that that's not been as much of an issue for me as I first thought. Okay, so on to the important bit then. How do these sound? Well, they've had a solid foundation to build on from the originals, but there definitely is still a notable step up with the PX7 S2s. These are very, very good. They're the best we've tested in this price range, and overall, the separation and clarity seems to have been improved, and the bass has leveled up as well. It steers clear of being boomy, it's very controlled, yet it does sound deep as well. Now, I've not been able to find any frequency measurements from Bowers & Wilkins, but every genre we've tested did sound great. From very bass-heavy dance music to classical, it was all strong, which is why I'm not too bothered that I can't adjust the EQ all that much. And everything about the way the sound has B&W DNA running through it, which for me is a good thing. I like their sound signature. And for me, these are without a doubt the best sounding wireless headphones that Bowers & Wilkins have made to date. But let's see what you guys think. I'll pop these on our binaural microphone and give you a taste. And a quick reminder as always, that these won't sound as good over YouTube as they would in person, but should at least give you a good flavor. <laughs> So hopefully you enjoyed that. Now with these new headphones, we've actually got a slightly smaller drive unit down to 40 millimeters from 43.7 mil millimeters in the originals. Now, although these drivers are actually revised custom 40 mil drivers with a low distortion biocellulose diaphragm, which sounds like a lot of jargon, but in real world testing means you should get a more refined audio performance. Now these drive units have also been angled, as I mentioned earlier, so that they direct the sound directly into your ear. Now this is pretty clever tech for this price point, it's normally found in audiophile quality headphones with much higher price tags. Their design will also offer a more natural sound stage as the angled driver design keeps them a consistent distance from your ear. Now there is some other clever tech going on internally as well, including updated magnets to produce new cones. So without getting too into the nitty gritty, what you can expect from these headphones is overall better details and resolution, a smoother high frequency curve and reduced distortion. Now you do have a few options for listening with these headphones. So firstly, you have the standard Bluetooth, which is Bluetooth 5.0. I've tested connecting these up to my iPhone and Mac and easily swapped between the two. No issues so far, connecting them up has been quick and seamless and for me, Multi-point connection is a must, so big tick in the box there for the S2s. You also have support for multiple codecs, so we've got uh, SBC, uh, AAC, Aptex, Aptex HD, and Aptex Adaptive as well. There's no support for the high-end LDAC codec yet, so you won't get the highest possible bitrate out of audio streams over Bluetooth, and we would have liked to have seen Bluetooth 5.2 at this price. Um, that being said, they can handle up to 24-bit audio, but for this to work, you must pair them with a high-res streaming service that supports this spec, 
and a phone that offers the Aptex HD or adaptive codecs. Unfortunately, this does rule Apple devices out. Right, so on to ANC then, which is a major selling point of these headphones. Again, we've got a couple of improvements here too with tweaked DSP to counteract those external noises, as well as a new microphone pattern. So you've got four microphones out of the six which are dedicated to the noise cancelling, and then you've got a dual voice calibrated mic system which should be able to pick up your voice better. On the whole, there is a step up in this department from the originals. There's no notable hissing noise when the ANC is on and working, which is something that I just cannot stand. We've tested them out in the office, out and about um, by a busy road, and on the whole, they perform better than the originals. I would say these perform well in indoor spaces, but not to the same standard when we were out and about with things like wind noise and that sort of thing. My initial thought is something like the Bose 700 and the Sony XM5s are stronger in terms of noise cancellation, but I do need to do a little bit more testing and I'll share my thoughts on that in our upcoming comparison video. So I'll give you guys a taste here and see what you think using our Binaura microphone. You've obviously got the different modes you switch between in the app, uh, noise cancellation on, pass through, or noise cancellation off. Now on the previous model, you could select the level of noise cancellation, but there doesn't seem to be that option on these S2s. One handy feature though, is that you can tap this button here on the left ear cup to shuffle through the different modes, so you don't need to select it in the app. It will also indicate which mode you're on with different beeps. Cool quality is also something that's important for me on a pair of headphones. So if these are gonna be a good fit for me, then I'd be using them a lot for calls while working. And from our testing, this is one area where these really shone. I called someone from the office and they didn't realize I was using headphones and said the call quality was the same as if I was speaking into my phone. I do think they perform better indoors than outdoors, however. But no major issues and overall, I'm really pleased with how these performed in this area. So battery life next. Again, more improvements here as well. So they've dropped the charge time down on the S2s from three hours to two, which is pretty good. And you get 30 hours battery with ANC on, which is really strong and means these can quite easily be used for working and traveling. You've also got a quick charge feature where a quick 15 minutes charge will give you an additional seven hours of battery, which again, really, really decent. Now we have already received some questions on how do these compare with the new Sony XM5s? Well, I, oh, a little handy arm. Well, I've been using the XM5s daily since they launched and so far I'm really loving them, but I think we need to have a separate comparison video to cover fully which I would buy. If you think you'll be torn between the two models, then make sure you subscribe to catch that. But my initial thoughts from testing would be firstly, that I think the PX7 S2s have the edge in terms of premium design quality. While the XM5s are a step up from previous models, they are still a bit more plasticky and they aren't quite as aesthetically pleasing for me. However, they are more lightweight as a result of the materials used, and I think they're probably the comfier option out of the pair. Now, there are a few tests that I want to carry out, so I'll be sure to include all that in our upcoming comparison. So for me, Bowers & Wilkins have taken a popular headphone and just made it even better. They offer the build and sound quality that Bowers & Wilkins became famous for. And while Bowers have released some good products over the years, these are definitely a step up from recent releases. And while I can't quite put my finger on why, it does feel like Bowers are back in the game stronger than ever with these headphones. Now, truthfully, these might be the best wireless headphones we've tested under the 400 pounds mark for build and sound. They have also made them more comfortable, something I've criticized in the past, but I'm still not sure they are as comfortable as other options out there. 
Things to note if you are considering these are that these aren't the most feature rich headphones out there. What they have got, they do well, and it might be enough for lots of you, but they are missing a 3.5 millimeter jack, for example, albeit you are supplied with a USB to 3.5 mil cable, which I think some of you might be a little bit disappointed by. They're also not extremely portable. They also don't have touch capacity. Again, that'll be a pro for some and a con for others. And you might find better noise cancellation on other models. Now that curveball that I mentioned earlier, Bowers and Wilkins have also teased an upcoming release of a new flagship pair of headphones, the PX8 later this year. Now these I feel are going to retail at 499 and the company have stated that there'll be a no holes barred wireless ANC model and the most advanced headphone to date. Now this all sounds exciting, but I'm sure some of you are having the same thought as I did. Should I hold off on the PX7 S2s and wait for something better? Now right now, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that you need to consider your budget and what you need. If you have a maximum budget of £400 and these PX7 S2s tick the right boxes for you, then there's your answer. But if you've got a bit of room to play with and could push to the £500 mark, then you may want to hold off. That price point, of course, puts the PX8s in the same territory as the Apple AirPods Max. And with the rumored AirPods Max V2 on the way, that's one comparison I really can't wait for later this year. For now though, what are your thoughts on the PX7 S2s? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always guys, and I'll catch you next time.